All right, in this video, we are going to find bases for the eigenspaces of this matrix. This is a problem just like the last one, uh, except for the last one was for a two by two matrix. And this time we are going to be looking at a three by three one. So of course that means that uh, we might have three different um, eigenvalues and each of those eigenvalues would lend to an eigenspace. Um, so we, again, potentially have three different eigenspaces for this, uh, each one um, related to an eigenvalue. So as we've seen, uh, A minus lambda I, uh, we can just subtract lambda uh, off of the main diagonal entries and leave all of the other entries alone. And then I can say that zero equals the determinant of this. And so we will use uh, the diagonal rule again. So that will be uh, negative lambda times two minus lambda times three minus lambda plus zero plus zero uh, minus negative two times two minus lambda times one and then minus zero and minus zero again. Now this is a cubic, but rather than me multiply it out and collect like terms, you'll notice that of all the non-zero terms, there is a common two minus lambda um, in there. So I might as well factor that out. So now I can do negative lambda times three minus lambda plus two right, because that's what's left over right here. And of course, uh, you should recognize that one. That one's easy to factor as well. It's lambda minus one, lambda minus two. So even though we could have gotten three distinct uh, eigenvalues, we actually only end up getting two of them. Notice that two is a double root on this uh, polynomial. So uh, we get that lambda equals one, or lambda equals two. So there's an eigenspace for this eigenvalue and there's an eigenspace for that one. So let's go ahead and find those. I'm gonna start with lambda equals one. And just like in the last video, I'm gonna go ahead and, and find this matrix with uh, one put in place. So uh, that's gonna be negative one, zero, negative two, one, 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 and one, zero, two. And again, this is um, a homogeneous problem, uh, so I'm gonna have zeros augmented on there. Now, what you'll notice is that uh, row one and row three, uh, they're just negatives of each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do negative row one, I'll just take my time and do these one uh, step at a time. And then I will do row three minus row one. I'll also go ahead and do row two minus row one, just so I can get that entry to be a zero. So uh, let's see, that's one, zero, two, zero along the top. Uh, and then that's zero, one, negative one, zero. And then it's zeros along the bottom. All right. So we can see that uh, if we want to say that, um, I guess, x is x1, x2, x3, seems like a good naming system, uh, we can see that x1 and x2 are leading variables, but x3 is free. So because x3 is free, we'll go ahead and say x3 is t. This second equation is x2 minus x3 is zero, or in other words, x2 equals x3, so x2 would have to be t also. And then the top equation is x1 plus 2x3 equals zero. And again, x3 being t would mean here that x1 is negative 2t. So the solution for the eigenvalues, uh, which again, I'm calling x1, x2, x3. x1 is negative 2t, x2 is t, and x3 is t. And if we factor out uh, the t there, we get t times the vector negative 2, 1, 1. 
And so you'll notice that the eigenspace here is the span of this vector. And also, as we said before, if there's only one vector in the basis, it uh, is vacuously um, uh, linearly independent. So uh, that means that the basis for uh, lambda equals one is just this one vector, negative two, one, one. Again, um, you know, your answer doesn't have to be negative two, one, one. It could be any constant multiple of that. So it could be uh, one negative half, negative half, for example, or negative four, two, two. It really doesn't matter um, since it's just one vector. Um, and that would be our answer for the uh, eigenspace basis for lambda equals one. Now let's find that basis for um, lambda equals uh, two, which was the other value. So we're gonna go ahead, I'll, let me put this uh, matrix here below just so you can confirm uh, the matrix. But if I put in lambda equals two, this matrix becomes negative two, zero, negative two on the top. It becomes one, zero, one in the middle and it becomes one, zero, one at the end. And again, um, it's a homogeneous uh, system, and so therefore it would be zeros. You'll notice here that all three uh, rows are constant multiples of each other. So the first thing I'm gonna do is minus half of row one, and that will get all three rows identical. And then I'll just do row two minus row one, and row three minus row one. So this uh, becomes one, zero, one along, zero along the top, and then it's zeros, uh, zero rows for the second and third uh, rows. And so you'll see here that x1 is the leading uh, variable, which means x2 and x3 are both free. So I'll say uh, x2 equals s, and x3 equals t. Again, they're free, so we just set them equal to some parameter. And then this equation on the top becomes x1 plus x3 equals zero. Well, x3 is t, so x1 is going to be negative t. So our solutions then, I'll write that here uh, for the vectors, x1, x2, x3, is going to be negative t, s, t. Now that's two um, variable or two uh, parameters there. And so we can actually separate this out and uh, show that they are, uh, show that the basis actually consists of two vectors, right? It's, it's t times some vector. Uh, in fact, that would have to be negative one here and one here, but it would have to be zero in the middle. And then it would have to be plus s times, uh, and then you can see it would be zeros out here, but it would be a one right there. So clearly the eigenspace is the span of these two vectors because it's a linear combination of those two vectors. And so span is covered. Now, are these two linearly independent? Well, this is a question that we've uh, seen many times. And uh, if we only have two vectors, as long as they're not scalar multiples of each other, uh, then they must be linearly independent. If you look at these two vectors, it's pretty clear that they are not scalar multiples of each other, right? Um, any multiple of zero, one, zero would have to have zeros in the first and third components, which clearly this does not have. Um, and so therefore these are, um, uh, these are the two vectors that are in the basis, sorry. Um, so we can say then that the basis for lambda equals two consists of the vectors negative one, zero, one, and the vector zero, one, zero. Either one of these can be replaced by a constant multiple of itself. Um, but of course, you know, at this point, we would just be doing that work, not for any good reason. Uh, but if you just happen to um, reduce differently than I did, it may be the case that you end up with a slightly different answer for what the basis vectors are. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know.